Welcome to episode 51 of our series of Duties of the Heart by Rabbeinu Bahia ibn Pakuda. And in this, uh, we're still in chapter 5 of the Gate of Wholehearted Devotion of All Acts. And in the last episode, we dealt again with this series of uh, examples of how the evil inclination will try and veer us off the correct path. In the last episode, we dealt with the concept of reward and punishment and how we should not demand rewards for something that um, we should be directing wholly towards God. <clears throat> we shouldn't demand immediate payment in this world and in the world to come by just doing what we have to be doing anyway. Um, if we do it wholeheartedly towards the gods, he will reward us anyway. But to actually make this mental subconscious demand or plea for reward for something we should be doing kind of free of charge is what Rabbeinu Bachia is urging us not to do. But we move on to the next example. And uh, he continues, When the evil inclination gives up hope of enticing you in the way just mentioned, it will attempt to do so through the manipulation of pride, arrogance and lack of of humility it will say to you and he quotes the evil inclination through your deep faith and perfect deeds in the service of god you have attained the lofty levels reached by the pious and righteous you are singular in your generation unique amongst your contemporaries and it is right that you show your superiority to them by deprecating and diminishing them Point out their evil deeds and call attention to the wickedness in their hearts. Humiliate them and rebuke them for it until they are ashamed and return to God, regretting their past. In this way, you will be following the practice of the prophets. As it is written in Yechezkel 43 verse 10, You, son of man, tell the house of Israel about the house, that they be ashamed of their iniquities. So Rabbeinu Bachia is quoting the evil inclination and this is his argument saying you are the chosen one you are the perfect of your generation you are you are in a position to talk down to others do it so that they may understand the wrongness of their ways and Rabbeinu Bachia is saying no this is not what you should be doing uh, and he continues, you may answer the evil inclination by saying to it, how can I condemn and humiliate someone whose attitude to God in heart and mind I don't know? Even if outwardly he appears to be contemptible, inwardly he may not be the way he appears to be outwardly. Although the prophets shamed and rebuked their contemporaries, they did so with the permission of the Creator, who looked into people's hearts and knew their evil thoughts. But it is not within the power of my insight and intellect to know what is in the hearts and in the secret thoughts. Without my knowing it, the inner life of one who appears contemptible in my eyes may be much better than his outer life. In fact, his inner life may be better than mine in God's sights. Though his external actions may be bad, the cause of this might be his ignorance of the duty he owes the Creator. He has more of an excuse than I do, since my knowledge is superior to his. For the Creator makes demands of a person only in proportion to his knowledge. I am therefore more blameworthy than he is, because my failure to fulfill my obligation of service to the Creator, despite my awareness of this duty, is more severe than his deficiency of duty out of ignorance. He disobeys God out of ignorance and inadvertence, whereas I disobey, disobey him mindfully and willfully. It is possible that his vices are external and disclosed, while his virtues are internal and hidden. In my case, it is the reverse. If that is the case, he is more worthy of God's mercy and forgiveness than I am. One merit of his outweighs many merits of mine, because no one observes his merit besides the Creator, and no one praises or honours him for it. But with me the reverse is true, since what is seen of my conduct is better than what is seen of his. The same is true with regards to transgressions. One sin of mine outweighs many of his, because my sin is covered and concealed, while his is open and conspicuous. When people scorn him for it, they reduce his punishment. But because my good deeds in this world are conspicuous, 
my reward for them is reduced. Reward for his virtue is reserved for him in the world to come. Punishment for his transgression in this world will be reduced because people scorn him for it. In my case, however, punishment for my transgression is reserved for the world to come. Moreover, preoccupation with other people's faults and scrutinizing their bad behavior or bad traits would prevent me from scrutinizing and identifying my own defects and faults, a task which is more vital to me and more basic an obligation. My condition is like that of a sick person whose own illness prevents him from focusing on the illnesses of others and whose own cure keeps him from attending their cure. If this is your answer, the evil inclination will be broken and defeated by you. So very wise words from Benu Bachia is that, um, you know, you should practice as you preach, but be careful how you preach. And uh, you should understand that, you know, this idea of, uh, you know, the, the qualities of each person, even though outwardly they may seem to be, you know, sinners, Inwardly, they may have done something heroic in their life that God would always love them for. Perhaps they will be punished for their, for their obvious transgressions, but, they will, but he will always uh, reward them for perhaps these heroic acts that they performed for other people when no one was looking. Um, and th let's look at another example. If its arrows do not reach you in the ways mentioned, it will lie in wait for you in your season of prosperity. And also when you suffer hardship, when all is going according to your wishes, it will say to you, it is the result of your own efforts, ingenuity and cleverness. You should therefore continue to exert yourself in your secular affairs and labor hard at them in order to maintain your present standard and even rise above it. Embrace these days happily and take pleasure in them, for in a very short while you will be called by name and you will answer your God and descend into the darkness of the grave, where there is no action or movement, no pleasure or pain. It will cite, regarding to this, the evil inclination, as proof of this, what King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever you can grasp and do, do it with all your might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. When you suffer hardship, it will call your attention to the prosperity of the wicked and the success of the heretics. As it says in Job 12 verse 6, the tents of robbers are at peace and there are safe places for those who anger God. And it will, the even inclination will also say to you, the only reason this misfortune has befallen you is that you have attached yourself to God's service and to his commandments. And you do not have the strength to bear it as the burden is too heavy and the end is too far away. If you would remove this matter from your heart and give yourself a rest from it, you would be in a happy state. As you see, um, as you see uh, enjoyed by the wicked, Witness what is said in Vayikra 10 verse 3. With those close to me will I be sanctified. And also from Amos chapter 3 verse 2. Only you have I known amongst the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities and the such like. When it sees that you intended to perform any religious act, it will magnify the act in your sight and discourage you from doing it. If you intend to fast, it will say to you, Beware, for fasting will weaken you, make you ill, and prevent you from attending your secular affairs, as well as those that concern your life hereafter. If it is an additional prayer you wish to offer at night, the evil inclination will bring to mind the thought that sleep is more beneficial to you than food, preserve your health, and strengthens your body more than eating and drinking. If you intend to give charity, it will cause you to imagine the loss of your money, place before your eyes a picture of impoverishment, and remind you of the misery of poverty and privation. And so, in every kind of religious or charitable activity, it will try to discourage you and make you feel like the activity is too formidable for you, so that you will desist from it. But when you consider committing a sin, the evil inclination will endear its pleasure to you and make you oblivious to the penalty. It will encourage you to do it and to develop a passion for it.
If you hear such things from it, answer it that any suffering you experienced in the past left no mark on you, but passed quickly and was gone. The recompense for it, however, stands forever, never ending or consumed. One can fast all day, but when night comes he eats again, and it is his reward that remains reserved for him. The same is true of one who keeps awake part of the night. When he sleeps, his vigour returns, as if he had not stayed awake. But the reward for staying up and offering prayer is reserved for him forever. As for giving charity, I explained this matter well in the ga gate of trust in God. In regard to sins, what you have to do is meditate and reflect on how quickly your pleasures fade, whether those permitted or those forbidden, and how the shame of a disgraceful act and the penalty remain with you in this world and the next. In this way, the evil inclination will be defeated by you. You will pursue right conduct and desist from what is disgraceful. And we're going to pause there in this chapter and uh, finish this episode there. So much to uh, reflect and so, so comprehensive a, uh, arguments uh, against the evil inclination. We should bear all of these points in mind at times of weakness because 100% I am guilty of a lot of these things that have been mentioned and Rabbeinu Bahia is giving us the solution in black and white. Uh, so we should um, study this and uh, maintain this kind of knowledge in our everyday, uh, everyday life so that when we are confronted with these issues, we can return to these great and holy words and, and fight the Yetzirah wherever he attacks us.